Welcome back to the garage. Or, if this is the first video of mine that you've seen, my name is Zane, and this is the HodgePodge Dodge Garage. <laughs> what kind of stupid name is that? In today's video, what do you say after about eight or nine months of me being lazy, having this Willys Jeep in my garage about two foot from my toolbox, that I actually see if it will start up and run. I know it's been a lot longer than anybody expected, but this little project is kind of a fan favorite. I've had a lot of people wondering where it is. I still have it, and today we're gonna to see if it will start up and run, just in time for me to pull it all apart and swap a 2.5 liter Chrysler turbo four cylinder into it. But anyways, let me uh, tell you that I did do a little bit of work to this off camera. I wanted to make sure that it was able to run. We'll go over that in a little bit. But haven't had a video out in a while, I do apologize. I've been getting some stuff done off camera. I got my forklift basically turnkey to where I can get on it and I don't have to worry about it breaking down. But anyways, before this intro gets too long, let's set the camera up and see if this little engine will fire up. Now for those of you that have watched the previous videos in the series on my Jeep will know I've already completely rebuilt the carburetor with a kit that came from KaiserWillies.com. Now for those of you that are not familiar with Kaiser Willys, they have basically every part you could ever need for one of these old Jeeps. The carb kit was around $50, but it had every single gasket, every one of the jets, every one of the screws. I basically just had to use the body of my carburetor and completely rebuild it. So I think the only thing that I really need to do is hook up a fuel tank to this. We'll prime it and see if it'll turn over. So let me get a lawnmower tank picked out and I'll get it hooked up. Now let's go over the work that was done off camera. Not a lot has been done, but at the same time, my dad is incredibly kind. He's always worked on cars himself, and he was nice enough to stop by the other day, check the starter out again, and do a little bit of work to it. I was in the middle of working on my forklift. I haven't had a video out in a while, and he knew that, so he wanted to help me out as best as he can. So even if you don't normally comment on my videos, if you would drop down in the comment section and say a special thanks to my dad for helping me out, it would mean a lot. I'll show him. He'll probably get a good laugh out of it. But I'll take you down off the camera stand and I'll show you what he done. So the work that was done off camera revolves a lot around the button that actuates this starter to move. If you remember, I actually done a video where I took this apart. I cleaned up all the contact surfaces. I oiled the bearings inside of it. And I put it back together, even painted it, put some blue stripes on it for what that matters. But I didn't have this actuator adjusted correctly. So whenever I hooked the battery to it, it would spin over, but it would not hit the flywheel. I thought something was even worse with this engine, so I basically quit on it. And what happens was, I didn't have this adjusted all the way like it should be. So my dad was kind enough to figure out the problem, adjust it how it should be, and you can see the engine has been turning over, and there's all kinds of debris already coming out of this inspection hole in the bell housing area. So let's get the battery set up. Get some fuel to this and see if it'll run. There you go. Try it. <laughs> it was running real quick. Yeah, I just think that. Yep. Was it stuck? <laughs> there you go. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah.
So after about, I don't know, a half an hour's worth of actual work out here, I actually proved that the engine in this Jeep is good. Now, when I originally bought this Jeep, I already had the idea in the back of my mind to swap in that 2.5 Chrysler four-cylinder engine. So this engine is not going to stay in here, but I can always keep it for another one of these Jeeps because if you're a Jeep guy out there watching, you'll know you just can't have one of these things. But anyhow, the video would have been extremely short if it wasn't for the fact that Bigfoot Incorporated in Pacific, Missouri, just today, was having an open house. I went there, I got some footage of some of the trucks. You have to understand this is a public event, so I couldn't really get very close to these trucks. I couldn't climb up on them or anything like that. It was mostly pictures for the kids. Now, Bob Chandler wasn't there at this event, which is kind of a bummer, but at the same time, I still got to go there and see some of the monster trucks that they had. The event started at 10 a.m. My morning was running a little bit behind, so unfortunately, I missed the car crush. They crushed some cars with one of the trucks, but it ended up breaking down afterwards, so I just got a few snippets of video. I thought I'd throw it in there and have some bonus footage in the Jeep video. You're fine, man. Oh, I don't want to get in your way. <laughs>
But anyways, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. It truly means a lot. The likes and subscriptions and everything help out a lot more than you would ever imagine. I know I don't try to push that a lot because it does bother some people, but hey, I mean, if you are on the verge, do it, do it. And as always, just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project, whatever that project may be. Now that this video is over, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.